recording, 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 recording. Those are on. Battery All right. Control. Great. Yeah? I'm excited. Okay. Welcome to the Massage Hodge Podcast. My name is Nick Paterka, a licensed massage therapist in Portland, Oregon. I am joined today by Daniel Bettencourt with Kaizen Massage and Body Work. Say hi, Daniel. Hello. <laughs> so nice to have you here. Nice Sorry, I'm, to be I here. came out of the gate with some energy today. I love it. No, Maybe it's morning. the espresso. Yeah, happy, I don't happy know. Monday. No, we're, we're um, so, uh, by way of context, I. Uh, it was the end of last year, my birthday. I was like, I, I got to get some work done. I'm like creating this practice. I'm stressed out. I haven't been taking care of myself. The interwebs brought me to you, mm-hmm. um, and it was uh, tremendous. I got to go visit uh, Kaizen and see your uh, lovely space, which we're going to talk more about. And um, that's how we how we met. And some of the conversation we had um, about how you came into massage and how you've built your practice was really interesting to me and really educational in a lot of ways. Uh, So I want to get into that. But first, if you could reveal sort of your origin story as it relates to massage therapy. Thank you. Uh, (laughs) Boy, in a nutshell, my origin story, I would say uh, it's it's important to know that I've worked for a company, Trader Joe's, for 15 years. Started when I was 15 years old. Big fan. Big fan of Trader Joe's. I am too. Uh, I'm no longer there. New Year's Eve was my last shift. Okay. Um, without Trader Joe's, I wouldn't have been able to kind of see my desire for massage therapy. And I want to jump, because I was thinking about this on the way, the origin story and all the facets that go into why we become what we become yeah. or what path we're on. Um, what it boils down to is I've been in several car accidents in my life. One in 2007, my senior in high school ruined my track and field career, mm. um, was rear-ended in a motorcycle accident in 2011, uh, was hit by another car in 2014. And the 2014 car accident was really when I kind of t- took a look at my body mm-hmm. and what I was doing to it on a daily basis. And working at Trader Joe's, I was a manager, 50 hours a week on concrete floors, I was doing 10 to 15 miles a day. And it just, I was coming home from my days and I was exhausted. My body was hurt and my weekends would just be rechar- excuse me, recharging so I could do it again. And for me, I, I just started a new, a new relationship. I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do time-wise. And it just kind of dawned on me with massage therapy that I've always had a massage therapist kind of help me get out of pain and get back into my routine and, and allow me to do the things that I've, I've loved to do. And I thought, why, why can't I be that healer? Mm-hmm. And prior to that, I hadn't really thought about you know being a massage therapist. Um, so... I just Googled massage therapy schools and one was right down the street. And I I said, you know, let's go for it. I want to create a space where, where I can have people come into my home, um, where I can allow myself a 15 second commute, where I can create my own schedule and still, you know, be that healer for those, for those other people. So that's kind of in a nutshell. Um, I was hurt. I met a couple of very talented, very skilled massage therapists that really inspired me to look at it from, we're all machines, mechanical, analytical mm-hmm. approach. Um, you know, other notes on that later. But uh, it was really, really interesting knowing that, you know, with, with all the experience that I had at Trader Joe's, with the business aspect of it, I kind of was was thinking, hey, I can incorporate some of my management experience and my my business skills in order to create uh, a business that I would be self employed at and and able to kind of work for myself. Yeah. So. Um, so the marriage of yeah. those two things is huge. Like, totally. Because as you know, in massage therapy school, you don't get a lot of business education right. per se. Right. It was um, two weeks of, yeah. Yeah. I think in, <clears throat> uh, at East West, we, I mean, there was a course and it set you up, but it wasn't, uh, it didn't like reveal all the, the realities of a private practice anyway, mm-hmm. but it was definitely a good introduction. Um, so tell me a little bit about, uh, the name Kaizen. So working at Trader Joe's, we have our core values and the, one of the most important core values to me was integrity is number one and Kaizen was number two. So it's a Japanese business term for a deliberate, consistent approach, uh, seeking a 1% improvement every Mm. day. So, so I tell my clients, you're not going to get on the table and feel hundred percent better when you get off, but if we can get a 1%, every day, every 
you know, with every aspect of life. I kind of incorporated it into my own life of what can I do this morning when I wake up to make tomorrow a little better. And a lot of that was, you know, for a year and a half after my car accident, I couldn't take my dogs on a hike. I couldn't go motorcycle riding. I couldn't go on a walk around the block with my wife because my hips hurt so bad. So it was kind of, you know, the, I found myself at times falling into kind of a rut of thinking that it can't get better. It can't get better because I was kind of trying, I was trying to take off too much at a time. Whereas, you know, the 1%, if I can go on a walk for 11 minutes instead of 10 minutes today, then, you know, maybe I can see a little light at the end of the tunnel. And, uh, you know, I, I just wanted to make it a place where, um, where people could come and get that 1%. And I remember in, we were talking about business class, um, it was kind of near the end of, of business school and we're all in the computer lab and we're running, th- going through the ropes of what it would be like to create a business and a business name and all the legal stuff. And I just typed in Kaizen Massage and Body Work, hit submit, created my business then. Um, and it just, that name came, out of, I guess, not out of thin air because it was something that was important to me through my recovery, but um, something that just flowed through the keyboard and that's where it was born. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I certainly felt more than 1% better th- Great. after the day that I saw you. <laughs> and that's what we hope for, yeah. but we settle for one. <laughs> yeah. Um, we're going to pause and we might edit this part out, but I, I need to do this because it's going to make it easier on me later. Mm-hmm. This is all about the sinking. Maybe I'll just leave that in. That might Great. be fun. Yeah. Be fun. <laughs> okay. So Kaizen. Oh, oh, I want to mention because I was looking over your website uh, and I would encourage everyone to go look at your garden because it is remarkable. And that's, uh, I feel yeah. so bad because, you know, we're talking about kind of obligations to ourselves, and that was something that I wanted to pursue um, actively of showing people how uh, easy it is to have a sustainable and a smart garden where you don't have to do a lot of work, but you can reap a lot of uh, reward. And I wanted to create, you know, kind of every month of the process of, of how it was. And I haven't posted anything for since last year, since I was making my garden. Oh, so yeah. now that I'm not at Trader Joe's, I'm doing full-time massage and gardening is my other passion. Um, hopefully, I'll be able to be yeah. putting more but stuff But the ones there. I saw of your, like, PVC pipe oh, strawberry, yeah, strawberry towers. That and, is really yeah. cool. And they're still alive and growing. They didn't die this year, which oh, I've that's... been super impressed. All my clients that walk through, they're just blown away. So yeah. it's, the, it's the things that we you do. You are um, benefited by being a handy person. Yes. Yes. I have no such skill. <laughs> I had a friend help me hang photos on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> Being a fine finished carpenter's son, I did pick up a lot of, uh, oh, a lot of skill sets. I was in his, uh, in his workshop uh, at a very young age. And, That's tremendous. Yeah. I had, my father was like, he was very smart and skilled at many things, but I wanted to play Mario Brothers. Totally. Yeah, yeah. It was always a struggle. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. he was like an amateur magician. He oh, was a wow. photographer. He was handy with wood in his hands. He was a chemical engineer. And yeah, I missed out. Yeah. yeah this, uh, but, you know, I, I try not to be too hard on myself about it, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. there's something there. Too bad. Good old Vern. That's right. Not with us anymore, but Vern ah. was a good guy. Yeah. Okay, so one of the big takeaways, besides just feeling great after I saw you, uh, was the way you built your practice. It was so smart. You did this like really great slow burn building over time. You were, I'm assuming you were still in Trader Joe's for quite a while. Mm -hmm, I was. Mm -hmm. While you um, grew your clientele, I decided to jump in the fire. Mm -hmm. So um, no slow burn for me. I'm like, go, go, go. Let's grow as fast as possible. And it's, it's hard, mm-hmm. yeah. It's a it's a difficult proposition uh, for f- to make that happen. But I'm I'm working every day, and I'm optimistic, and I'm, you know, doing things like this and getting more and more word out. But mm-hmm. talk to me about that approach. I, I particularly just in case there's students that listen. One thing that really stuck with me was that you got a booking software right away. Totally. And yeah. Talk yeah. about that mm-hmm. because that's that's really big. Like. That was just like, oh, that's so obvious now. I don't, actually don't even know if that would have been an option at the time, but something probably would have been sure. when I was in school. But right, right. G- just go. Um, tell me, tell me. The first month of going to massage therapy school, so I, I was working at Trader Joe's full-time still as a manager, uh, one to 11 shifts, five days a week, and then I was in school uh, five days a week from 8 to 12.30. So I basically I wake up at 7 o'clock, make sure all the homework was done, you know, get on the bus, go, yeah. go, go to, go down to school. Um, 
and uh, and then it just it was it was so much work for that year of nonstop grind, and I I wanted to be done with massage school and be able to just start on my business and have kind of a, a, a platform to jump off of. So the first month in massage school, uh, you know, the teachers say, Hey, every month you need to do at least two massages to, you know, and get feedback so we can, this is outside massages. It might've been more than two. Um, so I thought at that time, well, why not incorporate a, a place that can give me that platform and start banking those reviews. So I, uh, signed up with massage book, which was, it's a booking software and which I also use uh, highly recommend. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. been great, and it's growing and growing and growing. So I've been there uh, using it for four years, and they had a student version. So it was very, it's free. I could just, you know, get on Massage Book, check it out. And uh, and and by the time you got done with school, yeah, you had this, like, legitimate, like, following of, like, reviews and people right. and, like, buzz about you. Like, that is, like, And it, it was nice because huge. all the people, you know, I, I couldn't accept any payment. So, you know, it was my request for them was to write an honest feedback of, of their experience. And, uh, yeah, I got out of school and I had, a, I think maybe 40 or 50 five-star reviews that were already so smart already to go. So, you know, I hit the ground running. I hit that, uh, kind of created my space, uh, out of my home. And then, uh, from there, then, you know, it was a very slow journey because still as a, as a male massage therapist, it which was, I also want to talk about. Um, yeah. That was one of my fears because there was such a stigma around it in school of, oh, you're a male massage therapist. We won't be, be able to get any work. Um, and I found that to be the opposite. Um, so going back to the kind of the slow burn, I dropped down to four days a week as still a manager. And then I just kind of opened up my schedule to the days that I wasn't at Trader Joe's. Yeah. Um, for the most part, I was working mornings at Trader Joe's. So I had evening, afternoon availability. And then... As people kind of requested and filled up my schedule, then I dropped my days down at Trader Joe's. Where were those initial paying clients coming from? Uh, those Tra initial Trader Joe's? <laughs> no, those paying clients were those uh, people that that I had kind of been giving massages to throughout. Oh, my, because you my could reach year. now reach out to them, right? And they kind of wanted to pay me the whole time. That you know, the whole time they're like, "Can I leave you a tip?" And I, you know, I had to say, "No, you right. can't. It's illegal. You know, I can't take payment." Um, and then finally, you know, they came back with a vengeance. They're like, "Hey, I've told all my friends about you. I want to nice. come and support you." And, uh, and then from there, then it was just kind of that growth of the reviews online. And then, um, you know, really the sign, the sign, I, I had an A-frame sign made and that was one of the biggest kind of boosts in my, uh, in my uh, growth. But, um, eventually I went down to, to uh, two days at Trader Joe's mm -hmm. and then that was for a year. And the goal always was January of 2020, be done with Trader Joe's and be able to move on with just massage. And I was able to make it happen. So amazing. Yeah. yeah. If you are considering massage therapy school and you're listening to this, or if you're an educator, this like this model just needs to be shared with everyone. Yeah. Like, I, th I think it's, it's powerful to know that because you know, this day and age we listen to other people's opinion and we want to know how the experience was for other people. Um, and that, you know, you get that, you get those recommendations, those referrals. And that's what at least, my the slow burn was that organic word of mouth. I didn't pay any, you know, Google Google advertisements or Facebook advertisements. Um, I just wanted it to be. I wanted the people that were in my office to be people that wanted to be in my office, not because of a good deal or not because, you know, somebody told them to, but because they felt like they wanted to be there for them. Yeah, and that was, you know. Have you ever dabbled in other marketing strategies? I did. I think in in year one. Um, you know, I was a little discouraged because I didn't have any new clients in maybe like three weeks or a month. And mm -hmm. I thought, gosh, you know, have I met my cap of the people that are going to come see me? And uh, so I think I, I did a $50 Facebook advertisement for a week. It was uh, over Valentine's Day or some sort of holiday. And I didn't get, I got zero bookings, zero yeah. new clients, zero anything. And it cost me 50 bucks. And I was thinking, you know, okay, it could have been timing. It could have been exposure. And it was still fairly young in my business so I didn't really I didn't think anything of it and I wasn't inspired to do it again yeah so because I wasn't I didn't see that result that one time then I didn't right you know, so it's not again. to say that it doesn't work it couldn't right. work right. Yeah. exactly yeah it didn't work for me in yeah. that instance um but 
you know, that's, yeah, that's not. And since, and since then you've, you've grown in a way where you don't really feel like you need to do that kind of thing. Yeah. 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 And I would get the phone calls from Yelp and Google and, you know, Hey, yeah, you know, spend $500 and, you know, aren't you looking for more people? And I had, you know, it, it was, it was almost as if, you know, the, the calls that I was getting from them deterred me from wanting to advertise. With yeah. Them. So yeah. at times I would think about it and then I just get bombarded with, yeah. you know, Hey, spend money here, spend money here, spend money here. And I was like, well, See, really, I just the, want to grow organically. That's another advantage of growing the slow burn. Like mm-hmm. you had that, that leeway, whereas, you know, I'm, I mean, I'll try, I'm trying everything. Right? Yeah. Cause I'm mm-hmm. like, grow, grow, grow. I mean, I'm, currently wearing a shirt that says ask me about massage therapy <laughs> i plan to wear it everywhere i just wore it to the gym today like yeah i'm just like i need to create tons of awareness and just cast this wide net and mm-hmm. i am starting to get a little bit more thoughtful about who specifically i want to work with mm-hmm. i think that like narrowing in on that person and talking directly to them kind of like as opposed to just being like i'll help everyone yeah so that that niching down is sort of um, becoming more of a thing for me. Um, but okay. You mentioned this a little bit, um, being a male Mm -hmm. massage therapist. Yep. Traditionally the, the feeling is other males won't request a male massage therapist because they don't, they think it's weird or it has implications. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that, women will not request a male massage therapist because maybe they don't feel safe that way. Mm-hmm. That's like the classic thought. I have not encountered that more than a couple times in my entire massage therapy career where mm-hmm. it was like, they were like, no, no, I didn't realize it was going to be a, a male massage and they would switch. Like, and I was never offended. Like, it's, you know, you, people have to take care of themselves. Mm-hmm. So, what, have have you had any other encounters or any other thoughts about being a guy in the field? Um, you know, I was thinking about this on the way over today too, and it was it was so um, kind of educated to me that I would already have a struggle, that I would already have it was a predetermined fate yeah. that I wouldn't be successful. Yes, because I was a male in this in this, uh, especially being in Portland as a, you know, oversaturated, what was supposed to be oversaturated, air quotes here, yeah. um, four years ago. But immediately, I've had, I've had one experience with one client that booked a massage, we confirmed, and then later she didn't show up. And then, you know, I sent her an email, hey, what's going on? Oh, I didn't realize you were a male massage therapist and that it was in your home. So for that one person, ah. it was difficult um, for her and I, you know, I wish her the best in her, her massage journey of what she needed, but I haven't had any other issues with that because the people that are, that are coming to me know that I'm a male. They yes. see on my website that I work out of my home. Yes. And you know, those people that click on my website and see that I don't, I haven't had those experiences with yeah. them. So, you know, I'd say on a rough estimate, um, I have 75% of my clientele are female, 25% are male. Um, and you know, I've had, I've had kind of a various, um, not, uh, not, uh, let's see, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, like different reactions? Or? Yeah, different reactions. I mean, I've had a lot of male clients come to me and say, hey, this is the first time I've, I'm seeing a male, a male therapist. Oh, I see. And that to me was, you know, like, oh, well, you know, thanks for, for, you know, stepping out of your comfort zone and, you know, whatever. And, um, so it was, it was positive for them in the end and they, they keep coming back. Yeah. So, you know, I've, I've heard kind of this one over and over with my clients of, you know, they can be surprised with, uh, with a female therapist, how much pressure that they can apply versus a male therapist. Right. And they assume that because you're a male, you have, you know, you have stronger hands and because you have, you know, the ability to do that, which is completely false. Yeah. Well, that's and just a misunderstanding it's just about a misunderstanding. how, yeah. Right. Just the like the misunderstanding to me anyway, in school was since you're a male, you won't be able to succeed. It's going to be very difficult for you. Yeah. Not a very helpful thing to be training. Right. You know, right. So that could have been become, yeah, yeah. the fault of, of, um, you know, that, that, uh, part of the education. But for me, at least it was kind of a hurdle that I wanted to get over. It was somebody telling yeah. me, no, you're not going to be able to do it. Well, yeah, I can. Let's see if this is actually yeah. a thing. And for me, I found it, ha- it hasn't been a thing. Um, at least people coming to me 
realizing that I'm male and then leaving or yeah, you know, that kind of thing that only or... happened to me when I was like in a corporate setting where mm. the people didn't really quite know who they were going to get. Mm, yeah, mm -hmm. it does. It does concern me a little bit with platforms um, with like the out call apps, right? Where it's like the question is posed up front mm -hmm. because then people decide they should have an opinion, right? Yeah. Like, do, do you want a male or female or do you not care? Mm -hmm. And then it's like, well, I didn't, I don't really care. But now that you ask, I want, I, yeah, yeah, I guess I, yeah, mm -hmm. that's, um, something I think about sometimes, but yeah. Uh, and, and I was part of that kind of out call, um, the out call massage, uh, one of those apps. Yeah. One of yeah. the apps in the very beginning. And I was trying to, you know, just experience the massage. I think it was like the first month of, of me being out of massage school oh, and just wanting to, you know, have paid clients and, and check it out. And it never panned out for me. I never went to one of them. They were, all the requests were, did you get requests? Oh, I got requests all the time. Uh, okay. There was, there was an inundation. It just, it was either a little too far or I already oh. had, a, had a massage that was booked or, Oh, it just never you know, worked had, out. Right. At the time yeah. I only had one table. So it was breaking but your, down my table. Your and, sense was that you, even as a guy, you were still getting requested. Yeah. yeah I yeah. was, yeah, there was, um, at least for the three months that I was part of the app, there were, I probably get two or three re requests a day. Oh, wow. But it would be various Milwaukee, Oregon City, Portland. Far from where far you are. From, yeah. yeah. So if you are, don't have a space to practice and you just want to go travel around, then that might be a great yeah. option because it's, you know, you don't have to do anything other than be part of the app and then you can go on. But yeah. It just wasn't for me and not, not something that I, I did try to doing. sign up for one of them recently just to supplement and it was like they were saturated like they mm. could I couldn't get in mm. at this point essentially yeah and I th at, at the time I was like oh I wonder if it's because I'm a guy like I wonder if they have too many males signed up already and mm -hmm. they need to balance it out or maybe yeah. they just have too many therapists now period I have no idea right. but and I've met a good amount of them of uh, you know people that work for those apps and they're Pretty, they like they like what they do. They're pretty successful at it. They yeah. start you know early on with the companies you know start here five or six years ago, and they've been happy. So okay, more power to them. Yeah, no doubt. Mm -hmm. All right, practice building guys in the field. We're covering some good topics here. Great. What is your feeling about self care? How do you talk to your clients about it? How do you talk to yourself about it? It is a a recurring theme on this podcast. I feel like eventually I'm going to be able to create some kind of like book about self-care. Self -care. Yeah. So I'm and like the recurring theme so far, just so you know, is mm -hmm. like um, getting away from like the commercialism of self-care and the hashtag of it and like getting real about how to define it and what it should really mean for people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Kind of taking the term back. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if that's a buzzword for you or what you think about it. Yeah, um, I need to be better. Uh, yeah, I think I think that's a that's something that that everybody well probably <laughs> would agree on. Uh, as far as my client base, in 2019, I remember everybody saying this is the year of self care. Hashtag self care. And right. I, and I was wondering, well, what does that what does that mean? The the hashtag self care and the I did, I've never been a social media guy, so it's like okay, the, the trending and um, it was, it was inspiring to see everybody wanting to be on their path of self-care. Mm -hmm. I pretty consistently for the last couple of years have gotten a massage every two weeks. That was part of my, my own personal self-care because I knew that as a body worker, mm -hmm. we are rough on our bodies and Yeah, we, we, we don't get enough, um, the majority that I've talked to don't get enough care of our own. So in the perfect world, I'd be getting body work every week. Uh, for me, it's been a lot of personal reflection over the last year. I've kind of been on a self-healing journey. Uh, I've had to change a couple things in my life. And and it's for me, it's about a lot of the, the quiet reflection mm -hmm. and about the journaling. Um, it's not necessarily about... Uh, taking a pause here, reflecting... Um, <laughs> It's not about the uh, the things you buy necessarily, or yeah, the... and that's the it's even even for Christmas. My wife said, "Hey, you know, what do you want for Christmas?" and uh, and I said, "I don't want any material things. I just want I want an experience. I want something that I can enjoy and that can help me just unwind." 
And maybe that is part of the commercialism, she, you know. So she, I told her that I always wanted to do a float in a float tank. Oh yeah, that was always an experience I wanted to do. And she got online. She got a little float tank certificate, and I think a week later I was there experiencing this heavenly bliss that was floating in this. Yeah. Salt Are tank. you hooked on floating now? Um, I wouldn't say hooked, but I bought a couple more. Uh, yeah. Okay. You know, it's my plan yeah. is every two months to go back there. That's yeah. part of the the uh, the routine. Yeah. Of self care, and. It Those was, are pretty cool. I should do that again. I have, it's been a few years. Yeah. If it, you've never tried it, don't check it out. touch your eyes. Don't touch your eyes. Make sure your ear <laughs> not a joke. are in. Yeah. I had an issue, a little water in my ear. That was a couple weeks after oh, the float. Oh, was, yeah. Um, yeah. You know, yeah. Earplugs, don't touch your eyes. And uh, yeah. they've got some really cool ones now that are eight feet tall that don't feel like you're in a cocoon. Oh, neat. Uh, they've got the one that I had had stars and it was the, the space room. So uh, it was really... It was really great. Yeah, there's one right so, down the street, uh, Enzo Float. And I, sh I should go check it out. That's where I went. Yeah. Oh, you went here? Yeah. Yeah, I oh. went to Enzo, and then I was I looked up here, and I was like, oh, it's only two blocks away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So part of this, and I hope on here is something about uh, the energy of the universe, and if it's not, then write it down, because I... The do you want to talk about the energy of the universe? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I want to talk that about That is definitely yeah, not I, on the list, yeah, I want but to talk we're going to talk about it now. I want to talk about how things come to fruition, and why things happen, and... Um, yeah, you know, kind of. A well, but, but okay, that's that. We're highlighting that for the end. Yeah, that's a great that's way great. to finish. So, um, so this kind of dovetails nicely into the self care, into longevity. Mm -hmm. You uh, are relatively new to mm -hmm. massage yeah. therapy. I, I mean, I've interviewed people, I've had, or I've talked to people who've been at it for 10, 20 years, and, sure, or a long time. Mm -hmm. um, so, as someone who's I mean, maybe planning a long career. Yeah. Is that safe to say? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. How do you think about that? How do you think about the the ways? And I'm sure you've talked to people who've burned out and mm -hmm. seen things. And I, I yeah. have. Yeah, I've seen. Um, my, my number one thing is the amount of time that I will allow myself to massage. Okay. So with the massage book software, I have it set up where I will only take a maximum of five clients a day. Okay. And it's set up so it will not exceed eight hours of massage. So there, I have various clients from 60 minutes to two hour appointments. If I have five clients at two hours, that goes up to 12 hours. So it won't, it, it will limit the amount of work that, that I myself will take on. I find myself often if I'm booked up and if a client, a new client calls me and says, Hey, you know, can you fit me in? Part of me wants to change my boundary and say, yeah, you'll be my sixth client. I have vowed to myself not to do that okay. because if I start doing that, that starts slippery the, slope. Yeah, sli right. And then, and then it's okay. The seventh appointment or the ninth hour. And for me, I want it to be something that I can do for the next 10, 20, 30 years with differing modalities. Yeah. Um, there's so much continuing education out there that oh. I, I can't wait to, yeah. you know, I've gotten a couple tools in my tool belt, but there are so many different things that, uh, that are out there that help with the longevity of, uh, of, Different of, ways of to work therapist. that protect exactly. the therapist. Yeah. yeah, if you do the same repetitive thing every day, then yeah, that joint or something will have that dysfunction, and, yeah. and you won't be able to do it anymore. Whereas if you have a routine of, you know, Thai massage or Swedish or um, energy work or whatever it is, it can kind of mix it up and keep that longevity, uh, you know, fresh in the mind where you are being present with yourself because. I, as a body worker, want to take care of myself so I can take care of other people. Right. If I don't take care of myself, everybody else that comes on my table, I'm only giving them 50% of what I can, and that's not integritous. I can't do that. Yeah. Um, so I'd rather limit my income, limit the amount of people that I see, so I can continue to do it for a longer period of time. Uh, number two, so the number one is kind of the time that I devote to it. And number two is the tools that I have. So I think this the one of the second busiest weekends or Christmas or something, I saw seven, this is before I set up my rule. Uh, I saw seven clients in a day, varying um, techniques that I use, various body sizes, and my table just wasn't cutting for me. So I invested in a hydraulic lift table yeah. that has all the bells and whistles with the incline and the leg incline. Which is what we're recording Everything. on right now. Same um, type of table. It is Perfect. And every client that gets on there, they're just so, you know, as I bring, as you bring them up, am yep. I going up? Am I going down? Yeah. And for me, it's the, you invest in a tool, the right tool and a good tool because that's what you use every day. Yeah. My percussion massage therapy gun work that I can do in one minute instead of 15 minutes. Yeah. Uh, it's the working smarter so you don't have to work 
harder. Yeah. That's, those are great thoughts about that. Yeah, tools and time. Yeah, awesome. Um, are there any, I find this true of myself, are there techniques or muscles or parts of the body that you're just like really thinking about lately? I, it kind of like rolls. Like I'll, I'll like get in my head like shoulder blade and like every one I work on, I'm always like, investigating the shoulder blade like yeah. right now i really yeah. like lifting the shoulder blade and like seeing how it yeah. moves sure. and like digging under the skin and i'm like i'm always mindful like do they really need it like i don't just go there because it's like you're interested mm -hmm. yeah don't just be like i'm gonna go grab the terries because because it's i can't interesting <laughs> and i want to explore everyone's terries like do right. they need it number one of course um, but so like, yeah, for me right now, I, I just, I love manipulating a scapula and like getting my fingers underneath and like, it's, the feedback is always really interesting because it's not something that people always experience. Right. Um, so is there anything like top of mind, like for that, for you right now? Yeah. Um, hips have always been super fascinating to me. Yeah. Uh, a, because that was where I had a lot of my pain. So I needed mm. to learn more about it. And that was, you know, thinking back on kind of where the massage therapy journey started, I wanted to, you know, why does my structure hurt? What is the issue of this? What can alleviate? Uh, so I started learning about the structure and how powerful the hips and the glutes are. And I remember in school again, uh, somebody said, you know, stay away from the glutes because it's a very sensitive area. It doesn't really do anything. And at that time I was, oh, thinking, man. I was thinking, I was thinking, okay, that's interesting. I'm going to, I'm going to take that information. I'm going to research it a little bit later. Yeah. That I is a dubious so claim. I know. Yeah. So and I don't think it was from the same uh, teacher that said, you know, male therapist. Anyway. Um, I mean, I do ask during an intake, sure. are you okay? You know, like. Sure. Yeah. Are yeah. there any areas that you don't, you know, yeah. don't want to be touched? But just for me, the power of the glutes can affect so much low back pain and uh, can you imagine you know, pain? Oh, don't work on the biggest muscle right. on the body. Right. And yeah. for me, that's just so unfathomable. So if I do have, uh, you know, a new client that comes on and. And we're talking about something that's not necessarily a new issue for me, but something that I haven't touched base on in three weeks or a month. Or, you know, you have various clients that come in with the various, you know, amount of, uh, of issues. I take out my, my favorite book is my muscle manual. And it has the list of every muscle, every action, every common uh, dysfunction and, you know, stretches and everything. And I also love using my virtual reality headset. Interesting. So I have a virtual rea reality headset that has... Uh, the human anatomy that you can slice in any way on any axis and look at muscle groups, nerve tissue, where the veins are coming from, everything. So I like right after I get a client to kind of dive deep into that joint and be able to, you know, have that Not fresh neat. in my yeah, mind cool. of, of the client, what they're feeling, the hypertonicity that I'm feeling and go and see how that changes the function of when you elevate your scapula, you know, what does, what torsion, what angles change. And for me, I've always been very mechanical and analytical of how do things rotate? How do things, how are they put together? Why are they being held together like that? Um, so kind of forgot where we were going. No, we're, tangent, we're talking but, about like, um, uh, yeah, like what techniques you're kind of like, and you were talking about the hips, how that's yeah, really, yeah, yeah, hip, you love exploring uh, the hips. Pin, pin and stretch, I think everybody, that's like the number one thing that people are like, oh my gosh, that feels so good because we're constantly, we're sitting, we're walking, we're straining our, our bodies. And then that, I, f I find that a majority of people don't realize that their glutes are so tight. Yeah. Oh, I didn't realize, yeah, yeah that's the number. The but my, um, my five-year-old, he, he doesn't last very long on the table. He's very wiggly, mm -hmm. but, um, he's, he always wants me to do this pin and stretch where he's face down and I grab his ankle and I move his, um, hip around while yep. I, while I pin down his glutes essentially. Mm -hmm. And he's like, Oh, he's like, no, you're not done yet. You got to do the butt thing. <laughs> and I'm like, you can't call it that. <laughs> Don't call it the butt thing. <laughs> I'm like, it's a pin and stretch, pin honey. And stretch. Like you can't call it that. He's like, just do the butt thing. <laughs> I'm like, Oh geez, you're so five. I love that kid. We got, they yeah. say the darndest thing. Yeah, they sure do. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, I'm sure we could talk about hips and muscles and the joint uh, all day long, but mm -hmm. you brought up something, just n no small topic yeah. to finish up here, um, the energy of the universe. Mm -hmm. Just uh, maybe a few thoughts. Uh, uh, I'm just curious. I love that you brought something interesting up like this. Yeah. This is um, great. And this is, you know, 
precursor to this, this isn't for everybody uh, out there and their own thought processes are always, we have an amazing thing called our brain. Sure. And, and we can take information as we see it and we can understand it as we see it. For me, these past couple of years, I, I never really believed in the energy of the universe or, you know, I was raised as Job's witness, taught that there is, you know, this one way and that there was nothing else. So when I started asking questions, then that's when I kind of opened up to the uh, universe's energy. And a couple years ago, I was working on a project and my wife, she mentioned something uh, and I responded to it. She had mentioned something in her head and I responded to it verbally. Interesting. And she had, you know, she said, you know, why you know, why did you respond to that? And I said, well, because you asked me a question. And she said, no, I didn't. I was just in my head. So I thought, okay, well, that's interesting. And this went on for a couple of years and this happened multiple times with multiple people. And, and finally she said, let's go get a tarot reading. And I said, okay, I've never had a tarot reading done. Let's do it. Cool. So I had a tarot reading done, uh, April of 2019, went in with no information, but, it was, it but was an open a, mind. But an open mind. Yeah. Um, thinking, okay, you know, if this is important to my wife, then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give it a shot. I'm going to have an open mind and see what energy is out there. So went to, um, went to a lovely reader, Miss Renee. She's in North Portland. And, uh, and it, was a, it was a couple's reading. So she had, and I don't want to dive in too much into this. Because um, it might be personally revelatory. Well, yeah, we don't you know, to I don't want to drag on the podcast yeah. for those that are like, okay, you know, if you're not yeah. interested, then you can shut it off now. Um, <laughs> After but, you subscribe, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, part of the, it's a half hour reading, and she lays out all these tarot cards on the table, and um, she gives me a crystal, or she has me pick out a crystal, and, and she says, "Close your eyes, and and you'll be drawn to a card." And I said, "Okay, I'll close my eyes and be drawn to a card." So I closed my eyes and she said, open your eyes again. And I said, what's going on? And she says, are you a Reiki master? And I said, no, I'm not a Reiki master. She says, what is your profession? And I said, well, I'm a massage therapist. And she said, okay, you know, your, your energy is off the charts. If, if you don't have a Reiki master, you need to, you know, get hooked up with my Reiki master. She lives in Michigan and you need to be her apprentice. And I said, okay, interesting. First yeah. The tarot. Yeah. What else do you have for me? Um, so we picked a card and her tarot read was sp spot on. And people say spot on and they get, you know, kind of blown away. You don't believe until you do. Yeah. And at that point I was still kind of, you know, a little hesitant, but I was absorbing the information that she gave me. And as we left, she said, you are at a part of your, your journey where you can choose to split your energies into different ways, or you can focus on one. And if you focus on one, then you're going to have opportunities that come your way that you won't be able to turn down. I mean, they'll be there and you can turn them down. But if you want to continue your pursuit of what your life path is, then the opportunities will be will be calling. So we get in the car and we're in North Portland. We're driving down. I live in a garden home in Beaverton. And on that on that trip, I got four phone calls. From various, um, you know, building a cat patio to... Um, I get goosebumps when you said that. You no, know, that like, stuff. Uh, somebody wanted, they booked out six months of massage. There was a, a principal that wanted to do a self-care uh, thing for his teachers. And, and I got goosebumps as I was driving down. Like I would hang up one on Bluetooth and my wife was sitting there and she was like, can you believe that? That was just a call. And then another one came in and then another one came in another one came in. I'm thinking, what is going on with this? And over the course of the next couple months, I got hooked up with, um, with Leah, Reiki master. I'm now a certified Reiki practitioner. And the, what I thought was uh, just kind of things happening was not the case. So looking back on the, day, the night of your birthday, day of your birthday, you're part of the Facebook group. And you posted uh, something, I think it was the day of your birthday. Yeah. Or maybe the day before. Hey, I'm newly getting back into massage therapy. Yeah. Is there any but you know any tips or tricks? And I almost I almost wrote something on there, and I thought you know it was it was late at night or something, and I turned my computer off. And the very next morning, I had a booking from you. Yes, an email booking, and I thought, well, and I didn't see you on that group. I only, no, I didn't post yeah. anything. I yeah. didn't post anything, and I thought, well, you know, that's kind of that's interesting. This guy is you know he lives in kind of the pearl. He's you know wanting to start this new this new venture or kind of restart this venture. Yeah. Um, and 
I, f- I felt when I saw that post, I was like, you know, I connected with this guy. I was like, whatever it is, I'm, we're going to, we're, this relationship will build and something's going to manifest. Yeah. The next day you had a booking, you came, you know, and I had no idea about your podcast or anything that you sure. were trying to do or any of your energy. And, uh, and we, we can equate things and we can just say, Hey, things happen because they happen. Or we can hold our plate out to the universe and say, I'm ready universe. What do you have for me? And I feel like since I opened myself up to the universe and all the energy, you just get back what you put out. Yeah. And, and it was as simple as, um, you know, being okay with the guy that speeds by me and wanting to get upset. And then two minutes later, he's being pulled over by the police officer Mm. on the same day that I have, so uh, satisfying. You know, energy work done. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, you know, enjoy your new energy. And I just wanted to be at peace and have a have a calmer state of of mind. And it's like when you, when when you're ready to accept those things, then they'll be given to you. Yeah. Or, or not given. They'll just be. They'll be available. There. They'll yeah. be available. And that gave me the confidence of of leaving Trader Joe's completely. And um, you know, now I have a. a deck of tarot cards sitting in my massage room because part of my ability that I found is that, you know, I, I do some tarot readings and I've had, I, I can't say that I've had pretty good success because I'm just the messenger of, of whatever the universe sure. wants to communicate yeah. with these people that are receiving these tarot readings. And, uh, it's just been, it's been such a fascinating thing because a year ago, me would, would look at myself and be like, what are you talking about? Energy work and chakras. Yeah, all this woo-woo you know, stuff. Like, that's woo-woo yeah. stuff. And I looked at that and, and thought, um, you know, I thought about all those people that are receiving the work. And, and I thought, could all these people be wrong of receiving this work and getting benefit? And, and I thought to myself, if I have this ability or, you know, so, so I've been told and so I've, I've felt... Um, who am I to keep this away from people that, that do find benefit from it? Even if yeah. it is woo woo, even if it is, you know, not what we think it is. Yeah. Um, it's so powerful. And I feel yeah. like a lot of those, yeah, it's like, even if something is a placebo effect, let's totally. say, right. Isn't it still worth it? Right. Yeah. It's still, you know, <laughs> even, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. But I'm, but I'm not saying that's what this is. Cause right. I'm super, no, no, no. I'm super open to this, uh, the mysteries of the universe as it were. Yeah. 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 Personally. And, and there is, there's, there's so much out there. And for even my very first uh, Reiki session, her being in Michigan and it's like, okay, well, how are you going to do anything when you were, you know, 4,000 miles away, 3,000 miles away. And I'm sitting here on my massage table and then lo and behold, things happen and things manifest and you are left shocked because yeah. uh, how, how, Powerful and you and just, incredible it is. Yeah, and you just can't um, read about that kind of thing and accept it often. No. Yeah. No. And even, you know, I remember telling my friend uh, a week after it happened, I told him all these things, and he's like, there's no way. There's no way that that, ha- you know, that's all woo-woo. You're full of crap. And a couple days later, he sent me a message in the middle of the night, and he said, turn this turn this off. This uni- this whole universe, um you know, he sent me a message. He said, "Hash or uh, slash unsubscribe from the universe," because he he was looking at all the things that were manifesting because he was thinking about them. Yeah, and he was freaking himself out because all these things were coming to fruition uh-huh. right after I talked to him about it. Ah, uh-huh. so it was the the you don't believe until you do. All yeah. these things that he he was manifesting. He started to you know, is this is it the right thing to ignore the potential energy? Right. Is it okay to have our head in the sand and say, no, we are just a bag of bones and we're, for some, yeah, great. Yeah. For me, my head is out of the sand and I'm like <laughs> enjoying the sunshine and the, and the star, everything that yeah, is, is that's, that's to offer. beautiful. So it's, um, I it's love that. Freeing. Yeah. Well, thanks for bringing that up. That was really, yeah, that's really cool. I actually, it, it reminds me that I, I keep meaning to reach out to some uh, energy workers and maybe some tarot readers, like to get them on here and... Mm-hmm. I, I uh, met uh, someone who does psychic meditation recently. And oh, cool. I'm, I'm curious to like have him on and yeah. So I think we'll be exploring those topics in greater detail. Cool. Yeah. So much out there. Yeah. Awesome. Well, Daniel Betancourt with Kaizen Massage and Body Work. Thanks so much for being on the Massage Hodge podcast. 
and to the wonderful tens, maybe maybe we're getting up there, maybe twenties of <laughs> of listeners. Um, it all starts with one percent. Yeah, that's right, one percent <laughs> every day. Please uh, subscribe and share this podcast if you find it valuable, and we will see you next time.